Quiet, please. Quiet, please. At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. Thank you. Madam Public Advocate. All quiet in the chambers, please. Please close the doors. Everyone, please be seated. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call. Wasn't there triple on me? Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Here. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Espinal. Here. Sorry. Eugene. Here. Gibson. Here. Jonai. Present. Gradenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. King. Present. Ku. Kozlowitz. Here. Lansman. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Here. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Present. Richards. Present. Rivera. Rodriguez. Present. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Present. <laughs> Ballone. Van Bramer. Here. Williams. <coughs> Jaeger. Matteo. Combo. Speaker Johnson. Quiet in the chambers, please. All rise for the invocation. The invocation will be delivered by Reverend Dr. Demetrius Carolina, Sr., pastor at First Central Baptist Church in the great borough of Staten Island, quiet in the chambers. Dear old wise God, we come today asking for your divine wisdom and guidance as our city representatives conduct the business of the people. We pray for all New Yorkers, all mothers and fathers. We pray for family and loved ones. We pray for children and the most vulnerable among us. We asked and we are here reminded in these pressing hours that as we all are part of the human family, that our actions and our decisions in fact impact others in a direct way. During a time of much anxiety, we pray for peace and understanding. During a time of division and strife, we pray for stability and unity. During a time of inequity, we pray for federal, state, and city equity and restorative justice. We pray for our common and collective sense of self. And while these and other decisions and choices uh, we make may be challenging, we pray for the strength and fortitude to stand tall amongst others who have fallen prey to compromising forces. Lastly, allow the seeds 
we plant grow today to grow into blessings, not for us only, but for the entire city as we serve as a beacon of light on the hill that all can see and follow. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Please be seated. Quiet in the chambers, please. Shh. Motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Council Member Debbie Rose. Thank you, public advocate. I uh, move to spread the invocation in full upon the record. And I want to thank Reverend Dr. Demetrius S. Carolina Sr. for the invocation today and those words and blessings that were bestowed upon this chamber. Dr. Carolina maintains a respected reputation in my district of Staten Island as a man of conviction with deep concern for issues that relate to spiritual empowerment, economic equity, educational development, and human rights. His work has taken him to several continents on behalf of these issues, including the Liberian community um, in my district. Since 2005, he has served as senior pastor at First Central Baptist Church in Stapleton, where he contributes to the betterment of the Staten Island community by providing strong educational advocacy, economic development, and facilitating bold community partnership initiatives, benefiting various community organizations. And as the executive director of the Central Family Life Center, which Dr. Carolina, which is a multi-generational holistic program, oversees city-funded after-school programs, a senior citizens program, prison recidivism, mental health support, youth recreation, and various other community enhancement projects. He also leads our city-funded Cure of Violence initiative with a group called True to Life. He has made an appreciable difference in the violence reduction community. And, we, and he was appointed by Mayor de Blasio to serve on the city's Human Rights Commission. I just want to say that Pastor Carolina is a mover and shaker. He's a unifier, a coalition builder, and he's built a powerful coalition of community stakeholders and is responsible for bringing much needed resources to the Staten Island community. And we thank him for the invocation today. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Moving on. Adoption of minutes. Council Member Adams. Madam AGTB, <laughs> I move that the minutes of the stated meeting of May 23rd, 2018 be adopted as printed. So moved. Messages and papers from the mayor. <clears throat> M77, submitting uh, Dr. Mitchell Katz for appointment to the Board of Health. Rules, privileges, and elections. Communications from city, county, and borough offices. M78, appointing Satish Nori to the New York City Council's Charter Revision Commission. Received, ordered, printed, and filed, and very grateful that the public advocate made this appointment to the Charter Revision Commission. Mr. Nori is a fantastic New Yorker. Thank you. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M79 through M82, sidewalk cafes. Uh, coupled on a call-up vote, and at this time, I would like a roll call vote on today's land use call-up calendar. Quiet in the chambers for a land use vote. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Madam Public Advocate, with, with permission, I'd like to introduce my intern. Tanae Davis is a 19-year-old from Harlem. She's currently a sophomore at Howard University, where she's studying marketing. Yay. Yeah. Her anticipated <laughs> graduation date is May 21. Her interests include reading, community involvement, as well as fashion design. She's a former competitive, synchronized figure skater, and she has a black belt. Mm -hmm. She hopes to go to law school after graduating and become a criminal defense lawyer. She's very passionate about issues affecting her community, such as gentrification, NYPD relations, as well as youth incarceration. She hopes to create a nonprofit organization and teach the importance of higher education. She's concluding our service here as an intern because she will be leaving tomorrow or this end of this week to participate in a study abroad program in China. 
Tanae Davis. Want to stand, please, Tanae? Oh, okay, in the back. Thank you. And I vote, I vote aye. Uh, Madam Public Advocate, we, we of course wanted Councilmember Barron to be able to do that because this wonderful uh, person had to leave, but we also want to remind people that during land use call-ups, we don't typically thank interns. We were happy to do so today to do this, but uh, we wanted to allow that to happen. Thank you. Borelli. Aye. Brennan. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Constantinides. Aye. Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Holden. King. I own all. Ku. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Menchaka. Aye. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Uh, aye. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Williams. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, <clears throat> zero negative. Quiet in the chambers as we now hear from the speaker, Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Good afternoon. First, I would like to begin by honoring the memory of Eric Garner. Four years, of, four years ago, most of us, many of us, had never heard of Eric Garner. Now he is known all over the world. His death helped spark a movement that was long overdue and that is based on the simple notion that black lives matter. We stand here today to honor, the, honor a man that we lost on July 17th, 2014, and to remind the world, which is still watching this case, that black lives do indeed matter. Sometimes you watch the news, you read the paper, and it doesn't feel like people are listening or that people care. It's easy to feel discouraged or to feel angry. But then I think about Gwen Carr, who joined us here at City Hall yesterday, and I think about how this woman, this mother, lost her son four years ago in a horrific and very public way. Gwen Carr did not ask for this fight, but she didn't shrink from it either. She has gone on to lead a movement that has inspired people all over the world and has changed the way we talk about justice. We stand with and think of Gwen Carr and the Carr and Garner families each and every day. I also want to recognize the 15th anniversary of a tragedy that occurred right here in these very chambers. The shooting and murder of the late council member James Davis. Each and every one of us who was honored to serve in this city must remember James's footsteps and cherish his service when we gather in the members lounge that was named in his honor, the public advocate's predecessor when she was on the city council. We will never forget that day and will be forever in gratitude of the NYPD detail who protected people here that day. And we honor the memory of council member James Davis. Finally, I would like to pay tribute to three veterans 
of the FDNY who have passed away. I feel like we do this every month. It's every stated meeting. It's horrible. Since our last stated meeting, in the past three weeks, we lost Captain John Vigiano Sr. Captain Vigiano was a former Marine and a decorated member of the FDNY who lost two of his sons, who were also first responders, on September 11th. We also lost retired FDNY Battalion Chief Robert Muccio. Chief Muccio, whose friends describe as always working with great enthusiasm, served in the FDNY for 39 years, 39 years after serving with the U.S. Air Force in Vietnam. Chief of Fire Pre Prevention Ronald R. Spadafora was also taken from us in the past few weeks. Chief Spadafora was a 40-year veteran of the FDNY and passed away at 63 years old. While well, we remember these three New York heroes, it is important our thoughts and prayers are with our first responders every day as all three of these brave men died as a result of 9-11 related cancer, which they contracted in the line of duty. A few other New Yorkers I'd like us to keep in our thoughts and prayers are Jose Cardoso, who was killed earlier this month while working overtime at a Brooklyn warehouse. The 32-year-old was crushed to death by a coworker in a company van who then fled the scene. We offer our thoughts and prayers to his wife and two young daughters during this very painful and difficult time. And also in our thoughts and prayers are the friends and family of Angel Espinoza. Angel was a 28-year-old Staten Islander who was struck and killed by a falling beam while working at a construction site in Morningside Heights in Manhattan. I'd ask for everyone to please rise. We give a moment of silence. All rise. To these men and women. <clears throat> Thank you all. So jumping into our docket for the day, the council will vote on the following finance items. First, the council will vote on two Article 11 property tax exemptions. The first exemption located at 645 Gates Avenue is in Councilmember Robert Cornegie's district and would support the construction of 112 units of affordable housing. The second exemption located at 90 Sand Street in Councilmember Steve Levin's district would support the preservation of 508 units of affordable housing, some of that supportive housing as well. Two-thirds of it is supportive housing. It's a big deal. Next, the Council will vote on the following land use items. The Council will vote on a, a landmark I'd never heard before. Uh, I have to ask Councilmember Traeger about it. That's the designation of the Coney Island Regalman uh, Boardwalk as a scenic landmark in Councilmember Mark Traeger's district. Uh, Councilmember Traeger has worked on this for years, as well as Councilmember Deutsch. Both of them have worked very, very hard on this, and so I'm proud we're doing that today. We'll also be voting on applications for Article 11 tax exemptions for two properties that were included in Round 10 of the Third Party Transfer Program. The tax exemptions will facilitate their removal from the Third Party Transfer Program. The first exemption is for a property located at 490 East 181st Street in Councilmember Richie Torres' district and it will facilitate the preservation of 24 units of affordable housing. The second exemption is our property located at 1103 Franklin Avenue in Councilmember Vanessa Gibson's district, which will facilitate the preservation of 20 units of affordable housing. The council will also vote on the Department of Housing, Preservation and Development's application for an Article 11 tax exemption to facilitate the preservation of a 259-unit uh, affordable housing development located in Councilmember Mark Traeger's district. And the council will vote on a sidewalk cafe located at 223 Dykeman Street in Councilmember Idanis Rodriguez's district. I want to thank the staff from Land Use, Jeff Yoon, Chelsea Kelly, Jeff Campagna, Julie Lubin, and Raju Mann. Uh, next on the agenda, the council vote will vote on the following legislation. 
We will vote on Resolution 459, sponsored by Councilmember Carlina Rivera, which calls on the U.S. Congress to pass and the President to sign the Keeping Families Together Act, Senate Bill 3036, to immediately stop the Department of Homeland Security from taking children from their parents at the U.S. border, this cruel and inhumane policy, and express with express and ex accept with express directive from a child welfare expert and for additional legislation that would end family detention as an unsafe and harmful alternative. I want to thank the staff, Elizabeth Cronk, Rachel Cordero, and Rob Newman. Uh, the council uh, is also uh, may disapprove the transfer of any property within 45 days of receiving official notice from the Department of Finance on the list of properties scheduled to go through the third party transfer program. This round of third party transfer involves properties in the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens. The council will vote on disapproving the transfer of properties in council members Inez Barron's, Matthew Eugene's, Vanessa Gibson's, Andy King's, and Fernando Cabrera's district. I want to thank uh, the staff who worked on this, uh, Caitlin Fahey, Jose Conde, Megan Chen, and Tirza Nasser. Uh, the council will also vote on one bill related to senior center reporting and one related to health inspections of senior centers and social adult daycare centers. Introduction 411A, sponsored by Councilmember Margaret Chin, will require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to conduct health inspections at senior centers and social adult daycare centers that are considered food service establishments under the New York City Health Code and to publish their inspection results online. Introduction 399B, sponsored by Councilmember Paul Vallone, will require the Department for the Aging to annually report to the Speaker and to the Council and post on its website and provide data about the participants, programming, services, costs, and budgets of each of DIFTA's 249 senior centers across New York City. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, N Nusha Chowdhury, uh, Caitlin Fahey, Tirza Nasser, Smita Deshmukh, uh, Andrea Vasquez, Daniel Krupp, and Dohini Sampura. Uh, next, the Council will vote on Introduction 157C, sponsored by Councilmember Antonio Reynoso, which would reduce the permitted capacity of pretressable solid waste containing organic matter and non pretressable solid waste for each transfer station in certain overburdened districts. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, uh, Nicole Aben, Nadia Johnson, Jonathan Seltzer, Tirza Nasser, and Megan Chen, and I am really, really proud that we are moving this bill today. Uh, the council will vote to require bail bond agents to provide crucial disclosures to consumers before signing a contract. My bill, introduction 724A, will require bail bond businesses to provide consumers with a consumer bill of rights, which will be made available by the Department of Consumer Affairs in English and in six additional languages, <coughs> as well as require bail bond agents to provide consumers with copies of any and all documents related to their transaction. Introduction 510B by Councilmember Roy Lansman will require bail bond businesses to conspicuously post signage listing their maximum premiums and fees, as well as requiring the Department of Consumer Affairs to conduct outreach and education to the public in relation to their rights in dealing with bail bond businesses and how to file a complaint against an agent. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Balkis Mirig and Rachel Cordero. Uh, moving on, the council will vote on introduction 981A, sponsored by council members Carlina Rivera, Lori Cumbo, and myself, which will provide the city an additional tool to enforce the laws against illegal short-term rentals uh, throughout the five boroughs. I want to thank the staff, Megan Chen, Ed Atkin, and Rob Newman. Next, we'll vote on introduction 779A, sponsored by Councilmember Donovan Richards, which will require the Department of Correction to issue quarterly reports on the use of devices capable of administering an electric shock to those incarcerated in our city jails, tasers. We will finally vote on my bill, uh, introduction 741A, which would prohibit the city from collecting revenue and require the city to provide telephone services for incarcerated individuals for any and all domestic calls at no cost to them or to the recipients of those calls. We need to pass this bill, and I'm proud of this bill, because we should not be profiting off of people who can't afford to make bail, which more than 80% of these people uh, 
uh, which is more than 80% of people in jail, 85% of whom are black or Hispanic. We need to pass this bill because Rikers is still open and very far away from many parts of the city. And because the amount of money in someone's commissary should not determine how frequently they can connect with their families, friends, loved ones, and support networks. We want people uh, who will soon be returning home to their communities to be able to call their attorneys and their doctors, their counselors, their employers, all the people who help them stay out of jail to begin with. Uh, we are prohibiting the city from collecting revenue for phone calls, and we are mandating that all domestic calls in jails are free because it's the right thing to do for people who are locked up and for their families, and it's the right thing to do for the city. I want to thank the staff who worked on these bills, Daniel Aids, Josh Kingsley, and Rob Calandra. That concludes our very light agenda for today's stated meeting, and I look forward with, to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you. Quiet in your chambers, please. Discussion of general orders beginning with Council Member Rivera. Thank you. Uh, so I'm very proud today that we are going to pass a bill that addresses one of the biggest crises our city faces, and that's preserving our affordable housing. Intro 981 finally gives our city the enforcement capabilities it needs to crack down on the bad actors who for years illegally converted countless apartments, many of them rent regulated, into hotel rooms. With these conversions, they exacerbated our housing crisis and starved neighborhoods of desperately needed low-income housing. The data has shown for years what tenants and communities are going through, and today we are addressing these concerns with a bill that creates a more effective and efficient Office of Special Enforcement while also providing strengthened privacy protections. I want to thank the speaker for your years of leadership and tireless support on this issue. We were both advocates on this before getting to the City Council, and this bill has been a long time coming. I want to thank my 43 colleagues who co-sponsored the bill, particularly Lori Combo, Helen Rosenthal, and Jamani Williams, who have been on this issue for many, many years. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your advocacy for this legislation. Speak. I want to thank Jason Goldman for his support, Rob Newman, Ed Atkin, Megan Chen, and the legislative team, my staff, especially Legislative Director Jeremy Unger, for the many, many hours spent taking calls, drafting, editing, and getting this bill ready for passage today. I want to thank the advocates and organizations involved, including NYCLU, New York Communities for Change, and Housing Works for working with us to strengthen the bill. But most of all, I have to thank all the New Yorkers who came to the rallies, who made phone calls, who sent emails, and who never gave up against the billion dollar companies who use their resources to hurt instead of help bring transparency and accountability to an unregulated industry that harms thousands of working class New Yorkers. This victory is for you. You pushed me and you kept up the fight and we wouldn't be here without you. I will continue to fight to protect the people of this city with bold legislation. We're sending a message to Washington today to pass the Keep Families Together Act and reunite families with their children who have been separated and brought thousands of miles away, even to our great city. And I am introducing two bills today I encourage everyone to take a look at. It's to help everyday New Yorkers. One, to expand reporting by SBS, the Small Business Services Department, to give a clearer picture of the unique challenges small businesses face in their communities. And one, to give New Yorkers living in HPD-operated housing the option to report their rental payments to credit agency, which can help them build their credit. I encourage all of my colleagues to sign on to both of these pieces of legislation, and I thank you for, for giving me this moment to say thank you to everyone who made Intro 981 possible. Thank you, Council Member. And I want to thank those in the balcony for not verbalizing their position. If you support the bill, and if you oppose the bill, thank you, thank you for not verbalizing your position. The next speaker is uh, Council Member. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. <laughs> thank Council Member Levin. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, I'm just thrilled uh, to be able to hear today um, uh, say that we are voting to pass Intro 157C. Um, I, uh, I, I'm speaking before the prime sponsor, but I want to thank our prime sponsor, Antonio Reynoso, our uh, Solid Waste Sanitation Chairman. Um, this bill started as 1170 back in uh, 2000-something. 
We moved on to 495 last session. It is now 157. This bill is a long time in the making to provide environmental justice and waste equity to the communities of North Brooklyn, South Bronx, and Southeast Queens. And so um, I really just want to uh, uh, take this opportunity to thank people that have put in so much time and effort into this. I want to thank and acknowledge our speaker for taking on uh, this legislation and making sure that it comes to an equitable uh, conclusion. Um, uh, our chair, Antonio Reynoso, who has uh, invested more into this bill and really, I can't even think of another uh, piece of legislation that I've seen a council member in, uh, invest that much of themselves into a piece of legislation. So um, Antonio, um, uh, Antonio's predecessor, Diana Reyna, who first introduced this bill um, uh, two sessions ago. Um, council staff, my staff, Julie, uh, former staff, Julie Barrow, Ed Paulino, Jonathan Boucher, and Elizabeth Adams, Jeff Baker, Colin Howe, when Colin was here, worked on this bill, uh, Nicola Bean, Nadia Johnson, Jonathan Seltzer, Tirza Nasser, um, from New York Lawyers for Public Interest, Gavin Kearney, Melissa Ishan, Rachel Spector, also from uh, uh, representing them, the Wright Group, John and Larissa from the Wright Group, um, from uh, Nija, Priya, Mulgankar, uh, Eddie Batista, NRDC, Eric Goldstein, the Teamsters, um, all these groups that put so much effort into this uh, piece of legislation. Um, uh, we are providing a measure of, of environmental justice. The fight still continues in these communities, um, but this will bring us closer to justice. Um, and, uh, and I want to thank again um, our, our speaker and our chair uh, for making this happen. Thank you. I also want to thank uh, as well uh, Council Members Salamanca and Miller for working with us uh, over the long haul uh, on this legislation. Thank you. Thank you. And now for a vote, Council Member Vallone. Uh, thank you, Madam Advocate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And on a personal note, thank you to every one of you for keeping my little guy in your prayers and my family. Uh, I'd just like permission to vote aye on all matters on today's calendar. Yes. Thank you. Madam. And may you continue to be in our prayers, you and your family. Council Member, back to general orders. Council Member Landsman. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Um, the New York City Controller's Office estimates that last year more than 12,300 people turned to commercial bail bonds businesses to get their loved ones out of jail and paid between $16 million and $27 million in non-refundable fees to do so. Even as the number of people at Rikers has dropped, the number of private bail bond postings has grown by 12%. People desperate to get their loved ones out of Rikers will sign contracts, pay premiums, and put down collateral, often without realizing what laws regulate those companies or are intended to protect them as consumers and desperate people are prime targets for the unscrupulous and the predatory. While bail bondsmen are legally required to limit the amount they charge in fees, many exceed those caps or add on other illegal fees or surcharges, like bogus courier fees, to boost their profits. Today, this council will hopefully take a step toward treating bail bonds as the dangerous consumer financial products they have always been. Intro 510 requires bail bond businesses to conspicuously post the rules they are required to follow, making sure that consumers know the maximum that companies can charge for their services, know they will now be entitled to receive a Bill of Rights, and know about their right to make a complaint and direct regulatory attention toward bad actors. As the city takes other steps to reduce the use of bail and as nonprofit bail funds are able to expand their operations to handle more serious charges and larger bail amounts, our hope is that commercial bail bonds will no longer be necessary. But until that time, exorbitant, unpayable bail no longer holds defenders at Rikers Island. Today's bill will help protect those who rely on these businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Reynoso. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. The United States has a long history of racism that has mani manifested itself in a whole host of ugly ways throughout our history. Environmental racism has been a particularly insidious method 
through which historically disadvantaged communities have, made, have been made to suffer because of the color of their skin. The notion that black and brown people are somehow less deserving of a safe and clean environment represents some of the worst tendencies within our society. In my district, we have suffered with toxic conditions created by decades of heavy industrial uses, oil spills, and the reason I am speaking today, the highest concentration of waste transfer stations in the city of New York. These transfer stations attract thousands of trucks in my community, spewing toxic fumes into the air on their way to dump. Our children breathe these fumes from birth. Woodhull Hospital, which serves my district, has the highest rate of admissions for asthma of any hospital in the city of New York. Our seniors have to dodge 40-ton trucks barreling down our streets at high speeds. 72-year-old Leo Clark of the Bronx was killed in one of these encounters just a few months ago. How can a city that prides itself on, pro on progressive politics, a city that has committed itself to rigorously protecting its environment in the face of hostile federal government, possibly be allowed to allow a system like this to exist? How could I, the individual entrusted to first and foremost protect the health and welfare of my constituents, look a kid from the south side in the eye and say I failed to act? Today, we are acting. Intro 157 will finally provide communities in North Brooklyn, the South Bronx, and Southeast Queens a measure of relief and security. Furthermore, it will ensure that no other community in the city of New York can ever become like mine. It is not fair that North Brooklyn has to process 38% of the city's trash. Just as this wouldn't be fair if we had 38% of the city's parks or 38% of the city's affordable housing stock. This is a matter of basic equity. My constituents know that our community will continue to process the most trash in the city for the foreseeable future. We are simply asking that others step up and do their part. I want to allow Councilman Reynoso, who has worked on this for so many years, the additional time that he's needed to finish his remarks. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. The path to this vote has been long and winding. I cannot remember a single bill during my time with the council that has faced such complex political obstacles. There are literally dozens of people who work tirelessly to bring waste equity to our city's communities through this legislation. I want to thank former council member Diana Reyna, who originally introduced this bill under Speaker Quinn, and Steve Levin, who revived it under Speaker Mark Viverito, and has been an invaluable partner in moving this forward. To Rafael Salamanca and I, Danique Miller, and to all my colleagues who supported this legislation, even at great political risk to themselves, future generations can breathe easier because of your courage. Zara and the Progressive Caucus, Thank you to the Sanitation Committee staff of Nicole, Nadia, John, and Cullen, who dealt with all the changes of this bill, that this bill has gone through. My former legislative director, Lacey Tauber, who put forth four years of work into making this a reality, and my current legislative director, Asher Freeman. To all the advocates, the Teamsters, the New York City Environmental Justice Alliance, the New York Lawyers for Public Interest, National Resource Defense Council, groups in my district, Outrage, El Puente, Los Sures, and many other community groups and residents who organized, testified, and did the re research to show just how inequitable our current system is. We could never have done this without you. The reporters who got to pay attention to this issue, Kira Feldman, who broke the sanitation salvage story, and Danielle Muyo, who tracked this bill's progress in the council, and to Speaker Corey Johnson. You have shown an incredible amount of integrity, content of character, and leadership in getting us to this point. Without your commitment to environmental justice and basic fairness, this bill would still be languishing in committee. I want to extend my heartfelt thank you on behalf of the residents of North Brooklyn and, the front, and communities in the front lines citywide. Finally, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the memory of Mokhtar Diallo. Mokhtar was a 21-year-old Guinean immigrant who worked for sanitation salvage in the Bronx spending his nights doing his dangerous and backbreaking work on shifts that could last up to 16 hours for a mere $60 a day. Mokhtar was killed by the truck he was working on last November, but rather than taking responsibility for this tragedy, the company he worked for, Sanitation Salvage, engaged in a cover-up. The appalling circumstances of Mokhtar's death have finally galvanized the city to bring real reform to this industry. Intro 157 is the first step in this effort and will ensure that Mokhtar's death was not in vain. Now I would like to ask all of my colleagues to join me in voting in favor of Intro 157. Thank you. Congratulations. Seeing no one else for discussion of general orders, report of special committees? None. 
Report of Standing Committees. Report of the Committee on Aging. Intros 399B and 411A, Senior Centers. Uh, coupled, uh, amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. Intros 510B and 724A, Bail Bond Agents. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Criminal Justice. Intros 741A and 779A, Corrections Department. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Preconsidered Reso 457, Organization Funding. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 162 and Reso 460 and LU 163 and Reso 461, Tax Exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 981A, Short Term Residential Rentals. Amended and coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Intro 1021 through Preconsidered Intro 1040, Third Party Transfer Program. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 140. 43 and Reso 462, Sidewalk Cafe. Couple to general orders. LU 154 and Reso 463, Landmark Designation. Couple to general orders. LU 158 and Reso 464, through preconsidered LU 168 and Reso 468, Tax Exemptions. Couple to general orders. Report of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management, Intro 157C, Waste Transfer Stations. Amended and coupled in general orders. On the general order calendar, Intro 720, Site Safety Training. Laid over. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Couple to general orders. And at this time, I would ask for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Quiet in the chambers, please. Carnegie. Uh, no one 157C. Yes on everything else. Rodriguez. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Regarding Intro 157 and its intention to help those in communities of color with significant quality of life concerns as they are being disproportionately impacted, I believe that this bill has admirable goals and I am in support of its merits. However, as I have from the beginning struggled with this legislation and as I believe we missed an opportunity to get waste equity and transfer right for the communities of Southeast Queens, particularly for the areas of Community Board 12, an area in which I and Council Member Miller call home and have been on the forefront for years to improve. While this bill addresses capacity reformation throughout, conspicuously absent are the persistent issues of air pollution, truck traffic, foul odors and other matters that affect my quality of life and the quality of life of the people of Southeast Queens. Capacity issues are not a cure-all. It certainly is not for Southeast Queens and every piece of legislation makes an impact on New York City and these are not easy decisions to be taken lightly. In its present state, Intro 157 is not a solution for Southeast Queens. However, however, it does move us in the right direction to start to act on a vital matter that impacts our communities. I do appreciate all of the hard work that has been put into this bill, especially the initial groundwork of my colleague, I, Danique Miller. And I know this is not the beginning or the end of this conversation. In the future, though, I would hope that this body would engage in thoughtful collaboration, inclusion, and respect for all of its affected members for the greater good of all of our constituents. I welcome the continued dialogue, and therefore, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Okay. Aye on all. Okay. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I just want to speak briefly about housing. The bill is in pre-considered intro 121 and 122, and this is a bill that will allow for the shareholders of an HDFC in my community to be able to maintain the equity that they have accumulated in this building. The building consists of one bedroom apartments and the rents range from $400 to $462. Mm -hmm. 
And so we're so pleased that they will not be included in the TPT and that they will be able to continue to build long-term wealth which will be passed on to future generations. And I want to thank the council staff that worked on drafting that. Secondly, regarding the Coney Island landmarking, I just want to acknowledge that Councilmember Traeger did reference the historical part of the uh, landmark area that denied blacks and others the opportunity to go there. And I want to remind the commission that they have an obligation to include that significant history as they go forward in documenting areas that are presented for landmark status. And with that, I vote aye on all with the exception of 157 on which I'm voting no. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. I on all except 157 and 741. Thank you. Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to commend uh, Council Member Reynoso's uh, good intention in intro 157. I know he has a difficult, very difficult situation in his district, but uh, in good conscience, I cannot vote for this bill. Uh, let me just give you two brief reasons. One is because we are going to lose jobs. We're talking about, best estimates, about 200 jobs. And the part that baffles me is that we literally spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in this council to fund nonprofits who those nonprofits use uh, these companies uh, to uh, give gainful employment to people who often have a very difficult time uh, getting employment, people who need a second chance in life. Uh, I, it, it's very difficult for me f just to hear that someone is going to get a note saying you lost your job for people who have very difficult time uh, getting gainful employment. And many of them, if we are truthful, are people of color. Second reason is uh, the carbon footprint is going to increase in other areas. I do agree we need to do something in Council Member Reynoso. I mean, we, we have to figure that out. And I don't know what's going to be the outcome of today's vote, but, uh, but the reality is that the carbon footprint will increase in other areas. So in the long haul, we're not getting to the real root of the problem. So with that, I vote no on intro 157C and I on the rest. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chin. I on all. Cohen. Constantinidis. I'd be excused to explain my vote. Yes. Thank you, Madam uh, Public Advocate. Uh, for over a decade now, this council has led the way on making our city a, a greener and cleaner place to live. From climate change to local air quality, noise abasement, and managing stormwater and sewer runoff, we've tackled problems, problems on a global scale, as well as quality of life issues affecting single streets and communities. We've led the way on fighting for environmental justice. I was proud to work with Councilmember Andres Barron uh, last session to pass two major environmental justice bills that were the culmination of many years of her tireless fighting for, and her husband before her. Hundreds of thousands of working class New Yorkers and New Yorkers of color will have a seat at the table when determining how environmental burdens and benefits are distributed throughout the city. And the latter part of that, how we determine environmental burdens and benefits are distributed, is what I want to emphasize. We as lawmakers and government officials can't just act on what we believe is the right course of action for a given neighborhood. We also have to make sure that these neighborhoods have a voice heard at every step of the way and that most importantly, they feel that they've had their voices heard. There is no true environmental justice without that kind of engagement. No bill is ever perfect, and I've had a long dialogue with people on both sides of the debate of formerly 495 and now 157. I understand the concerns about its potential limitations, the unintended consequences that may follow from it, and again, the feeling that there just wasn't enough input from the communities affected in Queens. I deeply respect those concerns. As imperfect as this is, 
However, the fact is that this bill has a measurable positive impact on the city in terms of air quality benefits and emissions reductions. It will take steps to encourage carters and transfer stations to ship waste by rail or barge rather than trucks. It also has provisions to protect any worker whose job may be at risk should there be any upheaval in the industry. I've, I'm dedicating myself to work for a greater, greater greener NYC in any way possible with our speaker, and I've come to the conclusion this bill can be part of that fight. I will vote for it. However, I, as the understanding, as our colleague said, Adrian Adams, this is the beginning of a process, not the end, and that every neighborhood and every elected official walks away feeling that they've been heard and respected as part of this process. I thank you and vote aye on all. Thank you. Deutsch. Aye on all. Diaz. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair and all <clears throat> my council members, we in the Bronx, we have, we have been having a problem for many years, and the South Bronx has been the, the number one uh, uh, resident affected by uh, respiratory uh, problems. So we have been subject that every waste uh, Transfer plan have been put in the South Bronx. In the Bronx, people are people have been dying, getting sick. So today I stand here to uh, uh, admire and congratulate Councilman Reynoso for bringing this bill because the Bronx is being affected. I understand what my colleague Councilman Cabrera says about employment. Yes. Yes, we are. We elected officials in the Bronx, and we, together with the Bronx Board of President, we have been working to bring the jobs down. And we we need jobs in the Bronx, and we uh, have brought the the, the the rate from 14 percent to 4.7, and we need jobs. But we cannot. We cannot. That we must not uh, exchange job for life. And this is a bill that we protect my resident, the people in the Bronx, and the people in the South Bronx. So I congratulate, uh, uh, congr again, Councilman Reynoso, and the chair, the, the, the council uh, speaker for bringing this to the floor. So I vote yes on all except in resolution 457. Thank you. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye on all. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Good afternoon, colleagues. I want to commend all of my colleagues for passing important legislation today. I certainly want to recognize Council Member Reynoso for his leadership, Council Member Levin. Um, I want to recognize Council Member Rivera for her work on her legislation. I want to give a shout out to Council Member Traeger for allowing the Coney Island Boardwalk to be landmarked and recognizing a lot of the challenges that we've faced through the years in terms of diversity and access. And I want to speak uh, in support of an Article 11 tax exemption for one of my buildings in my district, 1103 Franklin Avenue, uh, that will be allowed to remain affordable for families for the next 40 years. 1103 Franklin Avenue is in the Morrisania community of my district, and I also want to support the disapproval of the third-party transfer of this property to remain in the HDFC program um, to provide equity and opportunity for so many families in the West Bronx. Um, I'm grateful for the HDFC coalition and HPD and City Council Finance and Land Use staff for all of their work. 1103 Franklin Avenue are extremely happy because now they get to remain in their homes um, and provide housing for their families. So I thank you for that. I want to thank uh, Chair Salamanca for his work. And I also want to recognize that in our presence today, I'm so honored. All of the work we do in this city council is always about providing a pathway for our young people. And this city council fought so hard for summer youth this season, council member Rose and many others. And I'm so grateful to have my interns here today with me. And I want to recognize them because they're excited to be here and see the city council in action. So I want them to stand as I call their name, Abdul Ajo Malbaran, 
Robert Rossi and Mario Rosa are here. Please stand. We're just excited about our young people. They are with us for the summer. We're working really hard in the Bronx, and I want to thank them and Children's Aid Society and Bronx Works for the partnership of always providing us with young people each summer. And with that, I vote aye on all, and thank you to all of my colleagues and our speaker for all of the great bills passed today. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Joan I. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Intro 157, um, on its merits, goes a long way to address a real issue. But this bill has allowed the city to pick winners and losers by making the small companies, the small guys, smaller and making more powerful and bigger companies bigger. The intent is not what this bill does. It will not reduce the amount, the amount of trash that is being hauled in and around this city. The only thing that it's doing is allowing for those small contractors to make the bigger contractors even more wealthier and it truly goes against the institution and what this city stands for in the form of free markets. It is not our position to decide who should be successful and who should not. This bill will allow those big companies who never come near capacity and will not feel this reduction in any way. It's the small permitted contractors that will be hurt and their business models will be cut by up to a third. And I believe the number is 12 businesses in New York City will actually lose and have their businesses undermined. I vote no on I-57C and yes on the rest. Thank you. Grudenchik. Uh, thank you. Uh, just briefly, Madam Public Advocate, I want to congratulate all my colleagues who are passing legislation today. And as Parks Chair, I'm especially delighted that the Regalman Boardwalk in Coney Island will be designated a New York City landmark, uh, probably the most visited of all the landmarks that we have. And I congratulate uh, my colleagues Mark Traeger and Chaim Deutsch on their excellent work. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Holden. I on all except intro 157C, I vote no. Thank you. King. I on all except 157C. Thank you. Kozlowitz. I on all. Lanceman. I. Lander. Vote aye on all, and I want to give special props to Councilmember Reynoso and Levin on a, a really good step forward for justice and fair share and waste equity in our city. I vote aye. Thank you. <clears throat> Levin. Um, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Just uh, two things I wanted to add to my comments earlier on 157C. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, uh, Councilmember Adams for her very uh, thoughtful comments. Um, I wanted to acknowledge uh, one person I left out before is Heather Bodwin, uh, who uh, worked very closely with us for many years on this as well. And um, one uh, point of clarification, the EAS uh, that studied the impact of this legislation uh, found that uh, uh, potentially 13 to 16 uh, jobs uh, may be lost as a result of this uh, legislation. Um, so that was, that was the, the findings of the EAS was a maximum of, of 16 jobs uh, may be lost. There will be a provision in this legislation, there is a provision in this legislation uh, to keep a list of, um, of any, uh, any people that were to lose their uh, jobs as a result of this legislation and, and, and that, that list can be drawn upon um, as openings come up uh, with the Department of Sanitation at marine transfer stations and so on and so forth. So, Wanted to put that out there uh, as a point of clarification regarding the EAS on this legislation. And with that, I am very proud to vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Mario. Uh, no one 157, no one 741, aye and the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Levine. Aye on all. Thank you. Maisel. Yes. Menchaca. Aye on all. Thank you. Miller. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Madam Public Advocate, uh, I rise to speak today on intro 157, a bill which um, 
that I have supported since my time in the council when it was uh, 495. In fact, it is a bill that I have supported with my predecessor, then Councilmember Leroy Comrie and Councilmember Moreno and in intro 1170. On its merits, it is a bill that deserves to be supported. And I have viewed this bill as having potentially holistically approached this as bringing justice to an unjust situation. Unfortunately, the very communities that we sought to help are potentially being harmed. The process, a process where members' voice and responsibilities have been advocated in lieu of advocates. Address, addressing environmental justice requires broader vision than being punitive and focusing only on waste management. It requires the creation of investment of in, in communities. It requires jobs to promote well-being of larger communities. In this spirit, I believe that we can be better than 157 will allow. We can encourage investment. We can strengthen communities. We can build more than a more equitable system. My colleagues in Southeast Queens at multiple levels of government, community leaders and industry leaders have worked for the past few years to create a new paradigm around waste transfer where communities of color become the standard for equitable waste transfer and recycle with little to no impact on the quality of life. I am confident that through my commitments through Chair Reynosa and Speaker Johnson, that we will be able to create thoughtful and intelligent policy and practices. Madam that Public Advocate, I want to allow uh, Councilman Miller, who has spent an enormous amount of time on this, to uh, finish his remarks today. Thank you so much, uh, Speaker Johnson. Uh, for waste management in our communities, and as well as recycling, making sure that implementation of this bill lives up to the initial aspirations and that we can bring a measure of justice to the unjust situation. This will require transparency and the community engagement and protection from special interests and political powers who might further subvert this. For this reason, I look forward to continuing to work with my colleagues here in the council, but I vote no on one five seven. Thank you. And I on all the rest. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. It's great to see you stand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye on all, no one, 157. Thank you. Powers. Aye on all, just quickly, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, I just want to congratulate both my colleague here, Councilmember Reynoso and Councilmember Levin, who I know for years have been fighting for the waste equity in, in their districts and on behalf of their constituents, many of you here today. I also want to uh, congratulate my colleague, uh, Councilmember Rivera, on a, a bill that many, uh, the entire council practically supports, uh, which is to continue to enforce against illegal commercial short-term rentals. I think in our time here in the council, we've had you know, seven or eight instances already where we've seen enforcement against commercial hotels, some very large in, in my district and in nearby districts. But, uh, and finally, I just want to say thank you to the, to the speaker who has an important bill that goes, uh, I think, somewhat unrecognized in a very busy and important day, but would uh, remove fees for people who are in our city jails for phone calls. It is an issue uh, and a bill that came right before our committee early on, and I know many folks feel very strongly about to reduce and eliminate, to eliminate uh, an additional cost for people who in many cases can't pay bail and therefore are held in our city jails and to add another cost that somebody sitting at home who can pay bail does not have to incur uh, seems fair and equitable. And so I wanted to thank the speaker and thank you to the colleagues in advance. With that, I, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Reynoso. Thank you to all my colleagues and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Richards. Permission to explain my vote. Yes. Uh, first off, wanted to start by uh, uh, thanking the speaker and the criminal justice chair uh, committee chairman Keith Powers for their support on uh, the Taser bill. Uh, as many of you know or may not know that uh, the Department of Corrections has now announced plans to increase 
the number of personal uh, corrections officers equipped with tasers from 25 to 154. And uh, this bill is gonna go a long way in being proactive and ensuring that uh, we hold uh, the Department of Corrections accountable through transparency uh, as they uh, have more of these weapons at their uh, disposal. I also just briefly touch on uh, 157C, and I've always been uh, a person who's thought, um, uh, you know, per never to let perfect be the enemy of good. And this bill, um, you know, certainly is not perfect in any form or fashion. And I don't know many pieces of legislation in the council we passed that are totally perfect. Um, but I do know in Southeast Queens, we have been overburdened for a very long time uh, with waste and by far, there's still a whole lot more work that needs to be done to ensure not even uh, just around waste equity, we make improvements, but we have the airport, we have air cargo, we have so many institutions located in our community that have done harm to the children and our elders uh, of our community. So I'm in agreement and alignment with both uh, Council Members Miller and uh, Adams in ensuring that the conversation does not um, stop here. But it is in my um, uh, belief that this bill is a major step in the right direction in ensuring that we start to hold the uh, industry accountable. And this is about environmental justice, uh, economic justice, and we have a long way to go uh, to ensuring that communities of color have that. So with that being said, I am happy to vote aye on 157C and I'm grateful and, uh, to the speaker for moving this and, and also both uh, Council Members Levin and Reynoso who have been so thoughtful throughout this process in communicating with us. So I vote aye on all. Thank, Thank you. you. Rivera. Rivera. Congratulations to all my colleagues. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rose. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Um, I commend Council Members Reynoso and Levin um, for the work that they put into this long and arduous fight for environmental justice communities. However, um, I can't vote for um, intro 157C because of the long history of Fresh Kills Landfill on Staten Island, where we got for over 53 years, 100% of all of New York City's garbage, thereby making it the largest repository of, of garbage and trash for over 53 years. I cannot um, vote for 157C um, because it would add to the amount of trash that we receive. So um, I vote aye on all, and I vote no on 157C, and, um, but that is not taking away any respect for the fight that um, my council members have waged against um, for environmental justice communities. Thank you. Thank you. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I first want to congratulate uh, my colleagues Reynoso and Levin on uh, passage of this bill. They've worked so hard on it and they're so dedicated to um, their community, congratulations on all your work. I also want to congratulate Council Member Rivera for um, passing her bill. You know, in thinking about it, we've been thinking about Airbnb so much, and of course it'll apply to any web-based web platform. But, um, you know, none of this, I, I just want to talk for a second about corporate responsibility and the fact that we wouldn't have to have legislation and we wouldn't even have to have uh, an office of special enforcement, you know, if, if Airbnb and other web-based platforms would just obey the law and make sure that anyone who posts on their website was obeying the law. And they could very easily do it, you know, it's, there's, you know, maybe it's out of their league, but there's this thing called technology um, and they could just, you know, very easily, uh, you know, have a flick of a switch, just a button saying, are you, are, will you be present during the rental, yes or no? And if the answer is no, you can't post on the website. Um, the technology, it, it can't be the technology that's the problem. It clearly has to do with corporate responsibility. And I hope those who invest 
in Airbnb, which we know is a private equity company, $36 billion, think twice about their investments because uh, certainly they uh, couldn't do anything illegal, um, but somehow they invest in a company where knowingly Airbnb uh, allows uh, illegal activity and other web platforms to happen on their website. So the solution could be so easy. The city wouldn't have to spend millions of dollars uh, if uh, Airbnb and other web platforms like that were good corporate citizens. Unfortunately, they cost our taxpayers uh, even more money and for us to enforce the law. So with that, I'm just so proud of my colleague for um, using passing legislation today that goes after the source of the problem. And of course, I vote aye on all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Salamanca. I would like to uh, give a big shout out to uh, Councilman Matrega. Congratulations on landmarking uh, Coney Island. It's a big win for your district. And I also want to give um, uh, congratulate Antonio and Steve on their hard work and persistence on passing this bill. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. If we could please silence our phones, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Torres. I will vote aye on all. <laughs> Thank you. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. So I definitely want to congratulate all of my colleagues on their bills. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to Councilman Reynoso, who spent quite a bit of time with me uh, working on the legislation, and, uh, uh, and I, I do appreciate that. Uh, Today is also a good day for Coney Island. We're voting to actually first preserve 258 affordable senior housing units. And I do want to note that for the record, and, and that's, that's critical to our community and to our city. But we're also officially voting to designate the Coney Island Boardwalk as a New York City landmark. And I'm very proud of not just the designation, but how we got this done. No conservancy, no lobbyists, no bunch of millionaires who worked on this. This was the old fashioned way, grassroots, thousands of petition signatures. I remember the public advocate joined us on a rainy day many years ago to preserve the boardwalk and I thank her for her support from day one. My colleague, Councilman Deutsch, Speaker Johnson, who has been a steadfast supporter, the former speaker, all of my colleagues. This structure, this boardwalk, it's so important to the city's history because as, as my colleague, Councilmember Barron referenced, Prior to the city owning the Coney Island Beach and Boardwalk, it was owned by private entities that did not allow access for all. There was segregation. Uh, people of color were not allowed to use certain amenities. Jews could not stay at certain hotels. So when the city purchased that land and built that boardwalk, it was a symbol, a turning point for integration, access for all, regardless of the color of your skin, your faith, what language you speak, where you're from, how much money you have, you are welcome and embraced and celebrated in Coney Island and on that boardwalk. So this is a proud day. It also happens to be National Hot Dog Day. Come celebrate. <laughs> Come celebrate Coney Island. F Friday night fireworks show, hot dog, catch a ball game, check out the Sharks exhibit. Thank you so much, my colleagues. I vote aye on all. That's Brooklyn, baby. <laughs> Ulrich. I vote aye on all with the exception of 157 and 741. I vote no on those two. Van Bramer. I want to uh, congratulate all of uh, my colleagues, in particular uh, Council Members Levin and Reynoso, uh, but I have to say uh, Council Member Reynoso and I met on a cold uh, February day about a decade ago uh, before either of us served in this body, and I think he's been talking about this issue uh, the entire time. So I just want to congratulate him on a long but important journey and, uh, and really say the art to succeeding is never giving up. And Antonio Reynoso did that uh, for his community uh, and for so many others. So I want to congratulate him. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Jaeger. May I be excused to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Mr. Speaker and the members of this body for recognizing the memory of my friend, Council Member James Davis, uh, who many of us knew well, who has uh, a room downstairs named for him, uh, and who was a friend of mine, 
Uh, 15 years ago this month, he was taken from us in this room. Uh, life cut far too short, and uh, he's somebody who, those of us who know his family, his mother, his brother, uh, uh, know what a wonderful human being he is, he was, and we miss him. Um, on a lighter note, I'd like to congratulate uh, my friend and my colleague, Council Member Traeger, for the work that you've done to, uh, to re keep my childhood playground uh, alive. That's uh, where my grandparents brought me. Uh, they lived on Ocean Parkway, uh, right off the subway, the L, just a couple blocks away from the boardwalk. I loved the boardwalk as a kid. I loved the boardwalk as an adult. And uh, you're going to keep it there for my child and uh, my, my kids' children and for future generations, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, uh, with respect to uh, our, my votes today, I will be voting no on intro 157C with immense respect for my colleague, Councilmember Reynoso, and the members of his body who worked extraordinarily hard uh, to get this bill to the place where it is. Uh, but for the reasons, and I won't say any more than simply point the record to the remarks of my colleague, Councilmember Miller, uh, for those reasons so eloquently stated, I will respectfully vote no, and I vote aye on all the remaining items. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. I proudly vote aye, and I want to congratulate uh, Council Members Reynoso and Levin for their hard work, and I also want to thank Council Member Miller uh, for uh, the way he has conducted himself and Councilmember Adams, the way they've conducted themselves throughout this process. And there is a commitment on behalf of the sanitation chair and myself uh, to work with them from now until implementation uh, of October in 2019 to figure out ways to support a facility in the district and incentivize additional investment, uh, whether it be through recyclable CND, construction and debris, or other ways. Uh, rail and other things. So our commitment is there, and I am really grateful for the back and forth we've been able to have throughout this legislative process mm -hmm. and the way that uh, my good friend Danique Miller uh, has interacted with me. He's been a gentleman uh, throughout this entire process, and Adrian similarly has been a wonderful person to work with. But I really do want to congratulate uh, Antonio and Steve because they have worked on this uh, before they were elected officials, when they were staff members in the uh, assembly and in the council, they had worked on these issues. And this is the third uh, speaker that it's come up under, and uh, this has not been an easy road, and uh, there have been some very legitimate concerns, but also I believe on balance this is about environmental justice. This is about a uh, disproportionate amount of these facilities being in communities of color that have been overburdened for far too long. And as uh, was said by Councilmember Richards, uh, we don't want to make the perfect the enemy of the good, which we believe this is a good bill which achieves very good things for the future of New York City. So I am really, really proud of you, Antonio. I am really, really proud of you, Steve. And I proudly vote aye on all. Thank you all. Items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, uh, zero negative and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 157C, which was adopted by a vote of 32 in the affirmative, 13 negative and zero abstentions, and intro 741A, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, three in the negative, and resolution 457, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one negative, excuse me. Revise um, vote on resolution 457, 45 in the affirmative, one abstention. And the revised land use call up vote is 45 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committee. Um, I would also urge my colleagues to join with me and Councilmember Deutsch, Ulrich, and Ballone in co-sponsoring Intro 1047, which would establish an outreach and education program within the Department of Veterans Services. Quiet in the chambers, yeah, we're still in excuse session. Excuse me, Madam Public Advocate. If, if folks would please be quiet, but also members have to stay because we need a quorum. We have some other things to vote on. So members, if you just stay a few more minutes, it's important to maintain a quorum and vote on the resolution, the very important resolution that Councilmember Rivera has put forward. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. So the bill basically identifies and, and helps veterans avoid higher education scams and access the benefits to which they are entitled and the quality education they deserve because they're being subjected to too many de deceptive business practices and we owe it more to our veterans in the city of New York. We now have a discussion of resolution, resolution 459, 
and the resolution calls on the United States Congress to pass and the President to sign the Keep Families Together Act, Senate 3036, to immediately stop the Department of Homeland Security from taking children from their parents at the United States border, except with express directive from a child welfare expert, and for additional legislation that would end family detention as an unsafe and harmful alternative. Any speakers on this? Seeing none, all of those in favor say aye. aye. All of those opposed? Any abstention? The ayes have it. And now on to general discussion, beginning with Council Member Rosenthal. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to thank uh, two of my interns who have been uh, incredible over the last few months, Rob Bentley-Yeski and Anisha Ayub. Um, they're in the audience today, and I just want them to hear that uh, I'm incredibly proud of the work that you've done. I can't wait to hear more about it, but you've worked so hard in our office as interns, and I'm really excited to no. stay in touch and see where you guys land. Um, you're just doing a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilmember Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I just want to remind all of my colleagues that you are invited tomorrow to a tour of a facility of an area that has made maximum use of what was a NYCHA parking facility. And we know that there's $500 million in the budget, and we're inviting you to come and see a model of what might be able to be replicated in other NYCHA facilities or other city-owned facilities that are talking about providing for senior housing. So we want to thank the speaker for making provisions for transportation. The van will be leaving from the parking lot at 1130. And at 1230, we will be taking a tour of the senior residents of the community-based facility that's there and other housing that's on that square block. And we will be gathering at um, Skank Avenue, I think it's 860 Skank Avenue, and we invite you to be a part of that. 890 Skank Avenue, and we invite you to be a part of that so that we can get the juices flowing and ideas going about possibilities. Quiet about down, possibilities we're still in session. We apologize, Councilman. Thank you. Possibilities for how we can get this senior housing done. Thank you so much. And again, thank, thank you. you to the speaker for making provisions for transportation. And if you're coming on your own, you can park right in front of the residence at 890 Skank. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Cabrera. Thank you so much. Today I'm introducing several pieces of legislation that addresses safety and quality of life concerns related to construction sites, access to information, landlord responsibility to tenants and school safety. Intro 1023 will require stores that only accept credit or debit cards to clearly post this information on signs so customers know before they try to buy something. Intro 1024 will require landlords to provide hot place to tenants when the gas has been shut off. Intro 1026 will require NYPD to report quarterly on noise complaints. Intro 1027 will require DOT to prevent unnecessary noise, cover dig sites, remove vehicles, and clean up dust and debris at the end of, the, of daily work. And Intro 1028 will require the Department of Finance to make a video of red light or speeding camera violations available to view online. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have a revised uh, tally. On Resolution 457, it was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. And the revised land use call-up vote is 46 in the affirmative, zero negative. Our last speaker is Council Member Adams. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I just wanted to uh, also recognize my interns that are here today. If they would stand, we, our intention was to bring more estrogen, more estrogen to the City Council for the summer months. Ladies, please stand. Ladies. Yay. Team Adams, colleagues. Thank you very much. That's girl power. And now to close, Speaker Corey Johnson. Good night and good luck. This meeting's adjourned.